Anthony Joseph Joe Perry is the lead guitarist, backing and occasional lead vocalist, and contributing songwriter for the rock band Aerosmith. He was ranked 84th in the Rolling Stones list the 100 greatest guitarists of all time. In 2001, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as part of Aerosmith, and in 2013, Perry and his songwriting partner Steven Tyler were recipients of the ASCAP Founders Award and were also inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Biography, Early Life, The Paternal Side of Perry's Family are Portuguese, originally from Madeira. His grandfather changed the family's name from Pereira to Perry upon arriving in the United States. His maternal side is Italian, more specifically Neapolitan. Perry was born in Lawrence, Massachusetts and grew up in the small town of Hopedale, Massachusetts. There, his father was an accountant and his mother a high school gym teacher and later an aerobics instructor. She later retired to Arizona when Perry's father died in 1975. Perry also attended the prep school Vermont Academy, a boarding school of about 232 students in Saxton's River, Vermont. A substantial early influence on Perry's music was the Beatles. The night the Beatles first played the Ed Sullivan show, boy, that was something. Seeing them on TV was akin to a national holiday. Talk about an event. I never saw guys looking so cool. I had already heard some of their songs on the radio, but I wasn't prepared by how powerful and totally mesmerizing they were to watch. It changed me completely. I knew something was different in the world that night. Formation and initial success of Aerosmith During Perry's early years he formed a band with Tom Hamilton called the Jam Band. Steven Tyler, Joe, Tom, Brad Whitford and Joey Kramer eventually joined and the band became Aerosmith. While initially dismissed as Rolling Stones knockoffs, the band came into its own during the mid 1970s with a string of hit records. Chief among these successes were Toys in the Attic and Rocks, thanks largely to the prevalence of free form, album oriented FM radio. The group also managed hit singles on the radio with songs like Dream On, Same Old Song and Dance, Sweet Emotion, Walk This Way, Back in the Saddle, and Last Child. During this time, Perry and vocalist Stephen Tyler became known as the Toxic Twins for their notorious hard partying and drug use. Aerosmith's crowd earned the nickname the Blue Army, so called by the band after the seemingly endless number of teenagers in the audience wearing blue denim jackets and blue jeans. The audience was abundantly male with long hair. Following rocks, the group began to stumble, drug use escalated and the creative process became hampered by strained relationships within the band. This was highlighted during the recording process for their next album, which was recorded at an abandoned convent in upstate New York. During their time there, Tyler and Perry would spend much of the time in their rooms, getting high, away from the rest of the band, and would often record their parts separately. The band, hampered by heavy drug use and distracted by hobbies such as driving fast cars on the nearby parkways and shooting high-powered firearms in the building's attic, struggle to come up with material. Draw the Line, released in 1977, became a hit nonetheless, going double platinum. However, it was not as successful as their prior efforts, with the singles Draw the Line, and Kings and Queens, both charting in the Hot 100, but failing to crack the top 40. On the album, Perry sang lead vocals on the track Bright Light Fright. The band toured throughout 1977 and 1978 in support of the album, but increasing violence at concerts as well as the band's heavy drug use began to mar the performances. In 1978, Aerosmith released the live collection Live. Bootleg, released the standalone single Ship Away the Stone, and starred as the future villain band in the film Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. For the film, the band released a cover of The Beatles' Come Together which would become the band's last top 40 hit for nearly a decade. Decline of Aerosmith and Formation of Joe Perry Project In 1979, Aerosmith headlined over Van Halen, Ted Nugent, ACDC and Foreigner during the World Music Festival concerts. An argument backstage in Cleveland resulted in Perry's wife throwing a glass of milk at Tom Hamilton's wife. After a heated argument between Tyler and Perry, 
Perry quit Aerosmith partway through the recording of the album Night in the Ruts, with the remainder of his parts played by temporary guitarists. Perry took a collection of unrecorded material with him, which would later become the basis of his album Let the Music Do the Talking, released in 1980. The album went on to sell 250,000 copies. Equipped with a new record label and three new band members in singer Mac Bell, bassist Danny Hargrove and drummer Joe Pett, the Joe Perry Project released the follow-up I've Got the Rock and Rolls Again and Once a Rocker, Always a Rocker. These albums didn't fare as well as the project's debut, selling only 40,000 copies apiece. Despite the poor sales, the project went out on a final door in support of the album, adding then ex Aerosmith guitarist Brad Whitford to the lineup. During this tour, the project performed in a series of co bills with Huey Lewis in the News. Reunion of Aerosmith and Return to the Spotlight. In February 1984, both Perry and Whitford met up with their old bandmates in Aerosmith, which led to them rejoining the band two months later. Aerosmith signed a new record deal with G Fen Records. When Perry rejoined Aerosmith, he brought on his manager Tim Collins to manage the band. Collins would help orchestrate much of Aerosmith's success over the next decade. In 1984, Aerosmith embarked on the successful comeback tour, the Back in the Saddle Tour. The following year, the band released their first album since reuniting, Done with Mirrors, which was received favorably by critics but did not fare as well commercially, only going gold and failing to generate a hit single, aside from the rock radio cut, Let the Music Do the Talking a remake of Perry's 1980 solo song. In 1986, Perry and Tyler collaborated with Run DMC. In a remake of Aerosmith's 1975 hit Walk This Way, which helped break rap into mainstream popularity and brought Aerosmith renewed mainstream attention as well. After completing drug rehabilitation, Aerosmith went on to collaborate with various big-name songwriters, producers, a and R men, and music video directors to launch their true comeback, with the successful multi-platinum albums Permanent Vacation, Pump, and Get a Grip, which were backed by many hit singles, Angel, Ragdoll, Love in an Elevator, Janny's Got a Gun, What It Takes, The Other Side, Living on the Edge, Cryin', Amazing, and Crazy, popular award-winning music videos, and worldwide concert tours. The band won several awards throughout the 1990s, including four Grammy Awards and 12 MTV Video Music Awards. Perry and Tyler resumed their friendship, again co-writing songs and performing very close together on stage, as well as vacationing together with their families after the conclusion of the Get a Grip tour. However, tensions in the band boiled in 1996, while the band was in the midst of recording their next album. While songwriting and recording sessions in Miami had begun well, the band's manager began pressuring the band members, spreading false information to the band members, and keeping the band members separate from one another, almost causing Aerosmith to break up. While grateful for all he had done to help resurrect their careers, Aerosmith fired Collins in 1996 and carried on with new management. The double platinum Nine Lives was finally released in 1997. Nine Lives was fueled by the hit singles Falling in Love, and Pink and supported by the three-year-long Nine Lives tour. During this time, Perry also starred in a commercial for The Gap with Steven Tyler. The band also released their best-selling tell-all book Walk This Way, the autobiography of Aerosmith. In 1998, Perry helped conceive the group's first number one single, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, with pop songwriter Diane Warren. It appeared on the soundtrack to the hit film Armageddon, in which Tyler's daughter Liv starred. In 1999, the rock and roller coaster starring Aerosmith opened at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Continued success of Aerosmith and solo albums, in 2001, Aerosmith performed at the Super Bowl XXXV halftime show and released the platinum certified Just Push Play, which included the top 10 single Jaded. Shortly after the album's release, Perry was inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as part of Aerosmith. The band subsequently went on the eight-month-long Just Push Play tour and went on to tour every following year, with the exception of 2008. The Aerosmith Blues cover album Honkin' on Bobo was released in 2004. 
Perry released his first solo record, the self-titled Joe Perry, in May 2005. It was recorded at his home studio in suburban Boston, with every instrument but the drums played by Perry himself. Critics also responded favorably. Rolling Stone magazine crowned it with three and a half stars, declaring a Joe Perry solo joint. About time. He was also nominated for Best Rock Instrumental at the 2006 Grammys for the track Mercy, but lost to Le Paul. In 2006, Perry performed alongside Steven Tyler for a three-song medley with the Boston Pops Orchestra as part of a nationally televised event to celebrate the 4th of July in Boston, Massachusetts. Guitar Hero, Aerosmith, a video game featuring the band's songs, was released in 2008. In 2009, while on tour with Aerosmith, Perry announced that he would be releasing a new Joe Perry project album entitled Have Guitar, Will Travel, which was released on October 6, 2009. The first single from the album was We've Got a Long Way to Go. This marks the first Joe Perry project album since 1983's Once a Rocker, Always a Rocker, and the fifth Joe Perry solo album in total, counting the 2005 self-titled album. He toured Europe and the States in late 2009 and early 2010 in support of the album. After Tyler fell off a stage during an Aerosmith show in August 2009 in Sturgis, South Dakota during the band's Guitar Hero, Aerosmith tour, tensions flared between Tyler and his bandmates, especially Perry, and it got to the point where the band members weren't speaking to each other. Media reports began to circulate that Tyler had left the band and that Perry and the other members of Aerosmith were seeking out a new singer to replace Tyler. On November 10, 2009, at a Joe Perry Project concert in New York City, Tyler made a surprise appearance, assuring the crowd he was not quitting Aerosmith and performed Walk This Way with the band. After Tyler completed drug rehabilitation in early 2010, he got back together with his bandmates and they announced a world tour called the Cocked, Locked, Ready to Rock tour which took place in the spring and summer of 2010. While on tour, several on-stage incidents as well as Tyler signing on to be a judge on American Idol without telling his bandmates caused tensions to again flare between Tyler and Perry, but cooled once again by the time the tour ended. Aerosmith then proceeded to spend much of the summer of 2011 recording their next album their first of predominantly original material in a decade. Like Honkin' on Bobo, their next album was produced by a team that included Perry, Tyler, Jack Douglas, and Marty Fredrickson. The band toured Japan and South America in late 2011 and continued recording in early 2012. In May 2012, their new single Legendary Child was released and performed live on the season finale of American Idol. It was also announced that the band's new album would be titled Music from Another Dimension and would be released in August 2012. The album's release date would later be pushed back to November 2012. Two more singles were released in advance of the album. The band supported the album with the Global Warming Tour, which lasted for much of summer and fall of 2012 and appearances on national television programs. The band is expected to continue to tour in 2013. In January 2013, the single Can't Stop Lovin' You was released, and in February, it was announced that Perry and his songwriting partner Stephen Tyler would be recipients of the ASCAP Founders Award at the Society's 30th Annual Pop Music Awards on April 17 and that the duo would be inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame at a ceremony to be held on June 13. Family Life Perry was married to Alyssa Jarrett from 1975 to 1982 and together they had a son, Adrian. Perry is now married to Billy Paulette Montgomery. They married in 1985 after meeting on the set of his Black Velvet Pants video in 1983. Billy appears on one of Perry's guitars, which is dubbed the Billy Perry guitar. They have two sons, Tony and Roman, while Billy has another son from a previous relationship named Aaron. Adrian and Tony Perry are founding members of the rock group TAB The Band. Currently Perry lives on Sleepy Hollow Farm in South Pumphrey, Vermont where he raises Frisian horses. He also has a home he resides in occasionally in Dewberry, Massachusetts. Philanthropy, 
Perry was honored by the Jeffrey Bin Foundation as the founding father of Rock Stars of Science 2013 for Perry's unequivocal support and generosity. The 2013 campaign's slogan, Rock Stars Don't Follow Orders. They follow their instincts heated up the photo and interview sessions with Perry and some of the world-renowned scientists from the world's most revolutionary medical research labs and high-tech proving ground for cancer research innovation at the Jeffrey Bin Cancer Research Center at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Follow Perry during his vaccine tour of the labs and interviews with the Dream Team at juraperry.com. A Euro OEITA Euro unregistered trademark as such important work, a Euro says Perry, a Euro OEIDONIA Euro unregistered trademark T know anyone who do us in a Euro unregistered trademark T have a parent or a friend who do us in a Euro unregistered trademark T have cancer. Eat a Euro unregistered trademark S A plague. Eat a Euro unregistered trademark S not a matter of if you are Euro unregistered trademark LL get it. But when a Euro Penny a Euro unregistered trademark S further died of cancer. Perry supports the Rock Stars of Science mission, which recognizes the importance of encouraging the next generation to pursue science as a career choice because it's simply cool, and to bring awareness for the need to make funding scientific research a national priority. Equipment The main guitar associated with Perry is the Gibson Les Paul. He has used many different types of Les Paul since the 70s including Les Paul Juniors, Les Paul Standards, and Les Paul Customs. In the 1990s and early 2000s, Gibson issued a Perry signature Les Paul guitar. This guitar was customized with an active mid-boost control, black chrome hardware, and a translucent black finish. However, in 2004, this model was replaced by another Perry signature Les Paul, the Perry Boneyard Les Paul. This guitar is characterized by Perry's custom boneyard logo on the headstock and a figured maple top with a green tiger finish, and is available with either a stop bar tailpiece or a Bigsby tailpiece. Perry typically uses a Bigsby equipped boneyard model in Aerosmith and solo live shows. The Gibson Perry was a present from his wife Billy and then he was allowed to manufacture it. Perry has also endorsed an affordable replica version of the Boneyard guitar made by Epiphone that carries the same USA-made Burst Bucker pickups as the Gibson model. In 2012, Perry began using a new custom Gibson, which is based on the more ergonomic Excess Les Paul. It features a more accessible neck joint and slimmer body, much like the Excess. It also features a single bridge pickup and volume control, as well as a Wilkinson two-point tremolo. There also exists a customized Gibson BB King Lucille guitar, however instead of a black finish and Lucille signature on the headstock, Perry's guitar features a white finish, a Billy Perry signature on headstock and an image of Billy Perry on the front of the guitar. He has also used Gibson SGs, Firebirds, ES-175s, ES-335s, and ES-350s at various points in his career. Perry has been known to play guitars of other luthiers and manufacturers. In the late 1970s and 1980s, Perry frequently used various Fender Stratocasters. Many of these guitars were left-handed strats turned upside down and appropriately restrung. One of these upside-down models is still played occasionally by Perry on stage, usually for sweet emotion. Perry also uses Fender Telecasters, some modified with neck humbuckers. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Perry endorsed B.C. Rich guitars, and frequently used the Mockingbird and ten-string B.C. Rich models. He has also been photographed playing what looks like, judging by the headstock logo, a custom-built Spectre guitar, and some ESP guitars during the 80s. The six-string bass guitar is a trademark of Perry's guitar sound. Instead of playing it like an ordinary bass guitar, he uses it like a regular guitar, playing riffs, chords, and solos, which is possible due to their shorter scale and narrower, guitar-like neck, compared to standard basses. The six-string bass helped to create the characteristic growl of Aerosmith's back in the saddle, combination, and draw the line. In the past, Perry used Fender Bass 6 and Dane Electro 6-string basses. He also used a Gibson EB6 for the bass solo on King of the Kings on the Joe Perry Project's Once a Rocker, 
Always a Rocker album. Perry currently uses an Ernie Ball Music Man silhouette bass guitar, which is modified with a Floyd Rose double locking tremolo. For amps, Perry uses a collection of various alternating vintage amps on stage, including 200 watt Marshall Major amps, a 1970s Silver Face Fender Dual Showman, a 1950s Fender Bassman, and many more. In the studio, he uses various vintage low wattage tube amps, including a 1950s Tweed Fender Champ and an Epiphone Pacemaker Model EA50 T manufactured in Kalamazoo, Michigan in the early 60s. For slide work, Perry typically uses a Dan Armstrong Lucite guitar, such as for Draw the Line, and Let the Music Do the Talking. Joe has also been known to use a Pro Company R80, Clint Central, Talkbox, Dunlop Crybaby and a G-Tech Whammy. Perry currently has a collection of about 600 guitars. Discography, with Aerosmith. Perry has performed on all Aerosmith albums with the exception of Rock in a Hard Place. With the Joe Perry project, Let the Music Do the Talking, I've Got the Rock and Rolls Again, Once a Rocker, Always a Rocker, The Best of the Joe Perry Project, Have Guitar, Will Travel, Solo, Joe Perry, Chef Perry, Perry has spearheaded the creation of an entire line of hot sauces entitled Joe Perry's Rock Your World Hot Sauces, which are featured widely in the marketplace. A quesadilla featuring a flavor of the namesake hot sauce is available as an appetizer at Hard Rock Cafe. Additionally, Perry was featured in a television episode of Inside Dish with Rachel Ray on a recent stop on Aerosmith's tour, in which he prepared a meal, displayed his passion for knives, discussed his hot sauce brand and cooking, and gave insight into what goes into meal preparation on Aerosmith tours. Until recently, Perry along with Aerosmith band member Steven Tyler and other partners, co-owned Mount Blue, a restaurant in Newell, Massachusetts. Influences, he is a huge fan of early Fleetwood Mac, particularly their first lead guitarist, Peter Green, which explains the occasional inclusion of the FM classic Stop Messin' Round, and Rattlesnake Shake in Aerosmith sets. Steven Tyler has even mentioned that hearing Perry play Rattlesnake Shake brought them together. He is also a huge fan of guitarist Jeff Beck and looked at him as one of his influences. Beck played on stage with Aerosmith in 1976, as a birthday present for Perry. Perry was also strongly influenced by Jimi Hendrix as evidenced in particular by some of the playing on the Joe Perry Project track song The Mist Is Rising, and his covering the Hendrix classic Red House, both with the project and later with Aerosmith. He was a huge influence on Slash, who after hearing Rocks decided to take up the guitar rather than race BMX. Slash owned Perry's old 59 Les Paul, but later returned it as a birthday present. He is a huge fan of Led Zeppelin and Jimmy Page in particular. He and Steven Tyler had the honor of inducting Led Zeppelin into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1995, and specifically stated that Aerosmith would not exist in its current form without them. Guest appearances Played on Gene Simmons's 1978 self-titled solo album. Played on two tracks of the 1978 debut solo album by David Johansson. Played additional guitar on Alice Cooper's song House of Fire. Perry was the first non-Kiss member to guest on stage with a masked band as he wore a pair of Paul Stanley's boots and jammed in the song Strutter on December 13, 2003, in Oklahoma City. This was one of the stops on an Aerosmith Kiss tour. Perry played on the guitar super ensemble CD Merry Xmas Vol. 1 with his own track Blue Christmas. The album also features Rush's Alex Lifeson, Joe Satriani, Steve B., Jeff Beck and others. He played the guitar solo on Eminem's Sing for the Moment, Perry liked the use of sample and said once it's great. The song lives again in another form. He also appeared in the Nelly video No. 1. He performed a duet of You Really Got Me with Sanjay Malukar on American Idol 6. He played with Tom Jones and later in a duet of Tom Jones and Joss Stone in the concert for Diana on July 1, 2007. He was part of an all-star line per Euro including Little Richard and Cheap Tricks Rick Niall Cena Euro that recorded the 2006 version of the Monday Night Football theme song with Hank Williams, Jr. Perry played guitar on the title track of David Hull's Soul in Motion. Perry endorsed John McCain for the 2008 presidential election, 
and described himself as a lifelong Republican. Perry performed the main theme to the Spider-Man animated series. Perry was also a judge for the fifth annual Independent Music Awards to support independent artists' careers. Played a detective in the Homicide, Life on the Street episode Brotherly Love. He was credited as Anthony Joseph Perry. Played the solo on the Bon Jovi song Last Chance Train from the 100 million Bon Jovi fans can't be wrong box set. His distinct playing style can easily be heard when compared to Richie Sambora. Appeared on Sons of Guns to get a gun owned by Elvis appraised, and in a later episode to get a cannon fixed. See also, The Joe Perry Project, Toxic Twins, References. External links, JoePerry.com, Perry's official website, Joe Perry's Rock Your World, Perry's Hot Sauce Brand, Aerosmith's official website, Aerosmith's official fan community.